So continuing here in the uh, present value annuity section, I'm going to show you how to calculate a car payment, and then I'm going to show you how to, how to uh, begin an amortization schedule for the car payment. And we're not going to finish the schedule, but I'll show you how to start it. Suppose you have selected a new car to purchase for $19,500. Now on this car, we're not going to make any down payment or anything, so the amount we're going to finance is just the $19,500. Uh, be careful if you're if you are told you're making a down payment make sure you take that down payment away from the amount that you're financing so if the car can be financed over a period of four years at an annual rate of 6.9 percent compounded monthly how much will your monthly payments be and then it says construct an amortization table for the first three months so the first part let's calculate the uh, monthly payment well we know this is uh, an annuity because you're making monthly payments and we know it's a present value annuity because the payments are designed to actually decrease this balance. So therefore, uh, we're dealing with present value formula. But we're not looking for the present value. We're actually given the present value. So this is the present value of the vehicle. Now, if, if you think about that, um, basically what that means is if you had $19,500 cash in the bank, you could just write them a check today and walk away and never make a payment. But uh, so that would be the present value if you paid it off today. But since we're going to pay it off monthly, we're actually going to have to pay more than that because we're going to make all these payments. So anyway, we're going to use the payment formula. And here's the payment formula in the pre for present value annuities. And so we'll put in uh, 19500 for the uh, present value of the car. And then the, the I, the rate per period, would be 0.069 divided by 12. And then in the denominator, we would have 1 minus 1 plus I, and then raised to the negative N. Now, N is 48 because it's four years monthly. So 4 times 12 gives me 48 months. So N would be negative. Well, N would be 48, but of course you have a negative 48 in this formula. Okay, now plug this into your calculator. Make sure you can get the answer 46605. Now, let me explain to you what happens when you make a payment. So, this is an amortization schedule. Uh, some schedules don't show you the first line. I'm going to show you what I call the zero row or the zero payment. So, at, at the beginning, you don't make a payment and you don't owe any interest and you Obviously, if you don't make a payment, there's no uh, principal reduction. But you do have an unpaid balance of 19500 Okay. Well, then uh, the first month, when the first month is up, you'll make your first payment. Now, this first payment actually includes uh, two parts. One part is the amount of interest that you owe. And the interest that you owe for one month is what we need to calculate. So I showed it to you right here, but let me show it to you again uh, a different way. So to calculate the amount of interest you owe after the first period, um, you would take the principal 19500 multiply that by the rate, which is 0 0.069, and then the time in years, and since this is uh, just one month, one month in years would be one twelfth of a year. Now, actually, if you'll notice this, when you multiply 0 0.069 times one twelfth, you really get the same value as little i. But but basically, you multiply principal times rate times time, and for the first month, you owe an interest charge of one twelve thirteen. So here's what happens: when you send them that payment four sixty six oh five. Only part of it goes to pay your uh, unpaid balance because they actually keep they keep the one twelve thirteen. That's the interest you owe. So the finance company actually will keep this amount. So if you want to know how much goes to reduce your uh, unpaid balance, that's also called principal. Then you subtract these. So just subtract these. So take this value minus this value. And then what it equals 
will be the unpaid balance. Well, then, since uh, I mean that that'll be the principal. So then the three fifty three ninety two. That's what's left of your payment once they take the interest out. That gets applied to the unpaid balance of nineteen thousand five hundred. Okay. So what you do is you you take the nineteen thousand five hundred. So you take nineteen thousand five hundred, and then you subtract from that the three fifty three ninety two. And that tells you your new unpaid balance of 1914608. Oh, okay, well then, uh, that sh so now your balance has been reduced. So for the next month, for the next month, uh, you calculate your interest for the next month based on the new balance, 1914608. You still multiply it by the same rate, 069, and the same time period, 1 12th of a year. But then when you do that, your interest actually drops a little bit, and it's going to be $110.09. So that's your interest for the second period. So now notice here when I go to the second uh, month, the payment is still 46605, but notice the interest has dropped to 11009. So again, if I subtract the 11009 from the payment, that will tell me that I have 35596 that's actually applied to the balance. So then I can take the old balance, which is 19146.08, subtract the amount of principal that gets applied, 355.96. And then I get a new balance of 18790.12. And so there's my, my new balance here, 1879012. Okay, well then, in the next, uh, to calculate the next interest, whoops, okay. So I take the 18790.12 and then I multiply that by 0 0.069 times the time 1 12th of a year. And then that's going to give me an interest of 10804. And so, so now the third period, I make my payment of 46605 and the interest charge of 10804 comes out of my payment. And then what's left, which is 35801, gets applied to the 187912. Uh, so if you subtract 35801 from 187912, I have $18,432.11. And actually, if you continued this all the way down through all 48 payments, then on the right-hand side at the end, you should end with a zero balance. And your last payment, sometimes your last payment isn't exactly 46605, because on your last payment, you have to pay off, uh, you have to pay off whatever your unpaid balance was plus whatever the interest charge. And, and sometimes the unpaid balance plus the interest charge on the last payment adds up to a few cents different from the normal payment. But uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, like I said, that only happens on the last payment. Okay, so that's how you set up an amortization schedule. And so I will just uh, finish this video with just leave, leave it there for this video and move on to some more examples on the next video.